I get up in the morning. I hit the pavement and go for a jog. I start building on my life and my head out there. I think a lot about the progress, the journey. Oh, sometimes I wrestle matches. I've wrestled a lot of matches out on the road. I spend a lot of time with my mother. I spend a lot of time with my father. At 37, I know that I've accomplished some goals that at one point in my life I thought were impossible. I really didn't become the wrestler that won matches until my senior year. I actually got to stand at the top of a couple of podiums. Underdog. Red's life was always about catch up. It was like he was down a point or two in life. I think he felt that, and he always tried to fight through it. My mother was my biggest fan. She was the loudest one in the gym. She was the loudest one, yelling and screaming and, come on, Red, come on, Red, get him, pin him. He knew mom was there. <laughs> Her happiness was watching him out on the mat. It was my thing as a kid, the wrestler. It just felt like it, it gave my life meaning at that time. After high school, there were opportunities to go to college with scholarships. I was hoping that he would go to school, compete, and then move on with his life and, and be productive. And, and, and have a good family. That was, that was my hope for him. I decided to take up a job on the fishing boats in Alaska. There was a, quite a bit of money involved. I transferred from job to job for a few years. With that fisherman's lifestyle came a lot of drugs and alcohol. We had come into port, we had picked up some drugs, and we had gone back out to sea. I was out in the middle of the Bering Sea when I tried methamphetamine for the first time. And, um, and it was just like, uh, there wasn't any worries. The stress level dropped down into the floor, like I could conquer anything at that time. I was addicted to methamphetamine the first time I used it. And it carried on back home. I didn't even really understand what was in methamphetamine for many, many years. It was late in my addiction when I decided to learn how to make it. Any one of the chemicals can kill you. I would do anything I needed to be able to get those drugs to get high and I couldn't stop. I'm a drug addict. I use drugs and I turn into a monster. And sometimes it meant doing crime and sometimes it meant hurting somebody. Many times I beat people up and held people hostage in their houses. That's happened a few times in my life. His lifestyle was extremely frightening, but I do know that my parents 
you know, tried as much as they could, such as getting him into counseling. I think they got frustrated. The world sucked him in, pulled at him, and, and, and he bit. I used methamphetamine for 15 years. I'd go in and out of jail two or three times a year for a month or two at a time. As the sentences got longer, I spent more time thinking about getting clean and thinking about changing my life. And a couple of times getting released, that was the plan. But then I had that first, first hit. And that all changed. And I'd be back to that lifestyle, back to doing crime, till the next time I go back to jail. This is the same cell that, that I stayed in, except there was one more bunk right here. Just a little dribble of water. It's dirty here. It's uncomfortable. This isn't it, dude. This isn't it. This is no way to live, man. The last time I went to prison was October 10th, 2003. And within a month of my incarceration, I got a phone call. And I found out my mother was sick. Here I am sitting in prison, and my mom's at home dying of cancer. And he just lost it. He just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed in the phone. And the best I could do was put up the phone to my mom's ear and let him say whatever it was that he had to say. I told my mother that I was going to change my life that I was gonna live a different life from here on out, and that she would always be proud of me. Those are words I've said so many times. They're truly gonna be different this time, Mom. I'm done. I just wish I could hold her again, you know. I got to build a relationship with Dad clean for a couple of years. The only thing they really wanted was just for me to be clean. This is the one thing I wasn't able to give Mom while she was here. spend a lot of time beating the pavement. Sometimes I make commitments out there on the road to myself, or I set goals. Being part of the team and being a wrestler, and you know, there was so much that I learned through teamwork and discipline, and I thought if I got back into wrestling, it would bring a lot of that stuff back to me. It was time to find out if the possibility exists that I could be part of a wrestling team again. At the time, I was thinking about the odds and me getting clean off methamphetamine, and the odds were one in a million. I'm coming out for the wrestling team, and I'm gonna make the team. Minute and a half, let's go, minute and a half to go. Push yourself. Honestly, uh, initially, I thought he's not going to make my team. My expectations of Richard were not very high. The reason why, he was fat, he was 36 years old. That's it, circle snap now, get his hands down. We got some guys who were beating the crap out of him in the room and just like, who is this old guy? I remember there was mornings I got up and I couldn't even walk. 
My legs hurt so bad. My arms hurt. But I just kept showing up. Let's go! Let's go! Loss of control! Yeah, two! Competing against, you know, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids who are elite level, he was at a, a great disadvantage. For him, it's, uh, we, we forget, it's a, it's a daily fight. Not just in wrestling, but in life. One more match and I'm in. Spent all year getting ready for this moment. I just kept saying to myself, I'm a champion. I can do this. This is it. I'm a little bit nervous. Now you gotta win. This is the match that if you win, you get to go to the national tournament. We're winning by two points right now. Look at me. Okay, you focus. You control the hand. Okay. I said, hey man, let's stay focused. You get this win. Two minutes to the thing you've been working for for the past two years and thinking about for longer than that. I won the match to qualify for the national tournament. It was the most exciting moment. We're going to the National Tournament. We're going. Yeah. Good job. Ah! Good, job. Good, job. Good job. Oh, I love you, Tina. Sister Tina, I'm glad you guys made it. I love you, baby. We made it. We're going to Minnesota. I know. Mom and Dad are watching from way above. I love you, baby. He didn't have to go to Nationals, he already won. But then he goes, that's, a, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy stuff. In the 184 pound weight class, wrestling for Clackamas will be Richard Jensen. I'm here to win this national tournament. I'm here to win the tournament. First match in the national tournament, and I have no idea what to expect. And then he locks the kid up and pins the kid. And I told him, hey, I think you got a chance. I thought that, hey, if things go, you know, the stars align and everything goes perfect, he could win this thing. Tough loss there at the end. He needs to have a second. Just have that second to enjoy the fact that he got there. Sometimes I get sad because some of these moments are the highlights of my whole entire life. And I don't get to share that in person with mom. You know, most of my life, you know, I took most of my adult life and I lived in a, in a, life, a lifestyle of darkness. And this is so bright right now. This is the most amazing experience. And I had no idea what it was, what it was gonna be like. And here I am. You know what I found out about getting clean? Is that it's not that hard. 
it's staying clean that's hard. I'm still gonna worry about him. I don't think it's over yet. I don't think it'll ever be over. I don't think you ever go through those kinds of things without something haunting you. I think there'll always be a battle in him. <laughs>